It's you. I'm a member of the board. Chuck Storo, uh, lawyer for Berlin Mall. Tom Cunningham from O'Leary Burke Civil Associates. Uh, Paul O'Leary from O'Leary Burke Civil Associates. Tom Badowski, zoning administrator. John Friedrich, member of the board. And Christy Flynn, recording secretary. And up here we have Susan recording. Mm -hmm. Susan Benton, work for media. Thank you. Um, so, uh, First application we have tonight, we're going to hear is a continuation of the application for a site plan review for the um, 99 units of senior housing facility. Um, and uh, what I'll do before we start here, I'm going to swear everybody in that there's a testimony before the board tonight. Not necessary, you sir. <laughs> you just want to tell the truth, none of the truth matters before this board tonight on the penalties of perjury. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we had a good meeting uh, four, weeks, four, weeks ago. four weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Yes. Uh, we set you off with a task to address a number of issues. Paul, if you would please start. Okay. Then so we're back. So excuse me, just a second. Preliminarily, can you or, or Tom explain how we are? What standard we're using to judge this by? Whether we're using the old regulations, the new regulations, this, or both regulations? This application is still under the old regulations. Okay, all right. The subdivision would be up, it's going to be under both regulations. Okay, all right. Good, I just want to make sure I knew. Excellent. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> all right, so we're, we're back uh, with a 99 unit proposed senior living facility. Uh, the building is essentially the same as it was uh, four weeks ago. Um, I think one of the board members noted that we were missing a, a stairway or two, and that's been added. And a little more detail on the plans, but it's uh, it's a mix. It's 48 independent units. There are 33 assisted living units and 18 memory care units. That's the same as it was last year. Same as it was before. So the, the first floor, as you look at it, as you walk in, um, you know, to the right, the wing is the memory care. So the only living units on the first floor are the 18 memory care units. The other wings on the first floor there's a, a dining room and a living room facility for the independent, and then there's a separate dining and living room area for the assisted living. Then as you look to the second floor, over the memory care wing is the assisted living on the second, third, and fourth. And the other two wings are the independent living. So the second, third, and fourth on the west floor, what I'll call the northern wing and the western wing are the independent living. So the, Basically, both the independent and the assisted are, are a mix of one bedroom and studio units. All right. Underground parking underneath it, we have 72 parking spaces. We have a, a ramp that leads into it from opposite uh, the, well, the garden center side or Walmart. I'll call it. We have the same configuration in the front where we have a, a, a drop off for people to come up to get out of the weather. There is 19 parking spaces in the front. So a total um, number of parking spaces now of 91. Uh, previously we had 112, we had parking spaces along Walmart. Um, we discussed that a little bit before. You know, based on the applicant's experience running similar facilities, you know, they think that, that probably only somewhere between 40 to 50 spaces are needed um, for the folks that are gonna be in the assisted living and the, and the uh, obviously the memory care you know, won't have vehicles. The independent living will. Assisted living, a few, uh, but not too many. So the thought now is, is roughly 40 to 50 of the spaces in the underground will be occupied by residents. Um, the other 30 or so, 20 to 30 spaces will likely be used by employees as they come and go. Typically at any one time, well probably the, probably the day shift is gonna be the highest time we have the most employees, and that'll probably be somewhere between five and seven. So we feel like we have plenty of underground spaces for both the employees and for the folks who are going to be living in the building, leaving the 19 spaces in the front to be used primarily by visitors, uh, delivery trucks, you know, UPS flower guys, whoever is going to come and go. And, and obviously we have, you know, the, the mall parking, you know, if we need some uh, additional parking on, you know, Mother's Day or some big, you know, visiting type days. Uh, we cleaned up the plans a little bit in terms of the curbing so it's a little bit clearer. 
essentially we are curbing uh, beginning at the access to the underground parking on the Walmart side, all the way around that oh, side of the building. Oh, let me pull this. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah. So, so we essentially we essentially start curbing here, and it runs all the way down along, all the way, and then ends at the first entrance uh, uh, into the building. Uh, doing some work here now you can see the trucks cut this corner all the time so this is the existing edge of pavement right here that bowl line and, and we're going to bring that out about seven or eight feet and uh, and delineate that a little bit better with the curve to try to keep uh, you know the vehicles away and one of the big discussions we had last time was providing a crosswalk or better access over to Walmart so we talked to the mall itself and we talked to the Berlin folks and so we've agreed that we're going to turn this into a four-way stop. Um, today there's only a single stop sign here. So we're going to add this stop, we'll be adding a stop here, adding a stop here. Uh, we'll have a crosswalk, um, probably about 35 feet from where the curb cut's going to be to get across to the Walmart side. The existing uh, concrete sidewalk comes all the way down as shown. It's about uh, seven to eight feet wide here, so a fairly wide you know, sidewalk where you step on to the onto the edge right there. Uh, we are proposing uh, speed limit signs, uh, one at the at the entry when you come in 30 miles an hour and there'll be a, another speed limit sign right here. Uh, we did spend some time you know down there and it is this kind of a racetrack today you know when people leave Walmart and come down through there you know they, they clip pretty good along through there so we would propose probably for the, at least for the first month um, before we open the facility that we put a a board up, you know, basically just announcing that there's a change, you know, in the traffic pattern ahead, just to give, give people the heads up, get them used to having that four-way stop before we start having, you know, pedestrian traffic uh, coming from the new facility. Oh, uh, we changed well, let, the, let me sure. stop you. I know you're doing a general yep. overview, but um, the you think the four-way is necessary? I'm not opposed to it. I just you. Well, we have we have a single stop here, and, and we yeah. think the stop here and here is definitely necessary because that's where all the speed is. Okay. And so, so now you've got you've got an existing stop. We think you need to to stop those other two directions. So now it's kind of awkward not to just turn it into a four-way stop. Is what what we thought. So we said, well, let's just do a four-way stop. It's easier to sign that it's a four-way stop. Everybody sees it. Uh, you know, if it was me, the two sides probably don't need a stop, but the fact that uh, there's an existing stop there now, that's what we've uh, decided the best way to, to go forward with it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we made some minor changes to, to the lighting. Uh, we added some of, the, some of the existing lights that we didn't have on our lighting plan, so we've added that. We, we're actually going to relocate um, this light. You know, we're gonna, it's, Right now it's in here. We're actually going to move it back, but we're going to slide it down a little bit more to try to give us a little bit more light on the crosswalk than, than what we have today. Uh, we had talked about dumpsters, you know, before before the client was indicating that you know they'd wheel dumpsters, you know, up the ramp, and it's kind of a general feeling that that might not be the greatest, you know, workable solution. So we've actually located a, a dumpster pad. Um, by the access ramp down to the garage. So the idea that you know people can go down the elevator, the, the workers can go down the elevators, and then you know, come up the ramp and find the dumpsters. The dumpsters are, are angled, thinking that the, the dump truck will come around the back and can angle in and get at that dumpster and, and pick it up. So that's why it's kind of it's kind of tilted a little bit just to make it easier for the for the truck to access that as it as it comes around. Uh, you had had some questions on the traffic before with uh, Roger Dickinson. Uh, you had asked whether there could be a change in the signal timing potentially. Uh, we had level of service C on the left turn out on the Route 62 and the left turn in. And Roger said he did look at the timing and basically it, no matter how much he tweaked it, he couldn't get it better than C. So, uh, you know, if he gave it a lot more green time, then it was starting to affect the uh, level of service on the through road. So it says C's about the best that, that we're going to get there, which is still a fairly good level of service. We did look at the other intersection. There was questions about the Fisher Road intersection as to whether there's any traffic information. I did talk to uh, Chip, uh, the Regional Planning Commission, and they have done tube counts 
but no attorney movement counts. So this project requires an Act of 50 amendment, as you're aware, and uh, we've asked Roger to go ahead and, and do the counts on that road and also uh, look at the you know the airport road route 62 intersection uh, thinking that Act 50 will be in our so that information and obviously we'll make it available to this board when Roger's done with it. Not expecting there's going to be any impacts but we thought we'd uh, uh, take a look at that and get that data and have it available to you. Uh, you had asked about bike rack. Uh, we're showing the bike rack uh, right at the entrance where the, where the covered area is. It's actually on the concrete. You know, we widen the concrete so it we'll sit on that concrete pad, which makes it a, yeah. a little bit I nicer. I looked for that. I, for, I couldn't find that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Landscape of course, I'm working on the drawing this big. Yes. Yeah, so. Landscape plan is pretty much the same um, as it was before. Uh, we are subdividing this lot out. It's 1.74 acres. Uh, this plan shows the 10-foot uh, side yard setbacks and the 25-foot uh, front yard setback. We did amend the plan to note that the building height as proposed is 43 and a half feet and with an allowable maximum of uh, 45, although I think the, the plan incorrectly notes that as a minimum of 45 instead of a maximum of 45. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, so I think those are all the uh, major items that we discussed last time that you asked us to, to take a look at. I noticed you eliminated all the retaining walls. We, we still have the retaining walls on this side, um, with, obviously where the ramp drops down in, but we, um, we talked to the Berlin Mall folks and they were okay with us uh, removing the retaining wall in the back and actually just uh, grading onto their property. So you removed two retaining walls in the back, Yes. one retaining wall on the side. Yes. You also removed the sidewalk. Yes. We did remove the sidewalk on, on, on the side. You know, originally it was there more so to, you know, for those parking spaces. So if you own those parking spaces, you could step on the sidewalk and then, you know, get to the entrance way. But without the parking spaces, it didn't seem like we, we needed to have the sidewalk without really encouraging people to walk to the, you know, the parking garage ramp and go down that. Not a um, not a deal breaker for us. If the board felt strongly they'd like to see that sidewalk back in there, we um, we could add it. We just didn't see that it brought a lot of benefit. Um, comments by the zoning minister. Question by the board members. I, I think what I what I was proposing to do is we, we had we had a number of loose ends mm -hmm. uh, and we asked them to address them at this meeting. I was I only wanted to identify the changes by criteria because our our findings are are based on your testimony last time. Yeah. Um, this time your your testimony is a little bit different. Uh, you've eliminated sparking spaces and stuff like that. Um, uh, so, okay. But I, th I was. I was going to go through criteria, but we, well, we, we can. Well, we can just ask questions, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Go. So let's talk about this road here, because as I recall, there was concern, you know, with those parking spaces and and the and the interplay of people going in and out to get to the to the drive-in or the ramp, I'll we'll call it, plus the trucks which would be coming in and out of there as well. Uh, if I compare the two plans here, looking at the previous plan. Um, we have the parking spaces. It looks what you've done is you've eliminated, the, obviously, you've eliminated those parking spaces, and then you've, yes. moved, you've moved the the edge of the non-developed property or, or the landscape out, right? So this this line right here is about at the at the edge of where the parking spaces would <coughs> would have been before. Uh, the close to it, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, that that line represents the existing pavement out there today. Okay. So we're not adding any pavement. Other than what I talked about right at the corner, we're going to remove some pavement and try to, you know, make that so it's not a big radius. The, right. the remaining edge of pavement uh, remains the same along that side of the wall. And, and here you, it sounds like you said that, that the trucks have been clipping this corner a little bit. So you're, you're putting yeah. the curb in so that it'll be more difficult for them to do that. Is that do I understand you correctly on that? Y yes. Uh, there's still plenty of room for the truck to make the swing. What the goal was, was to shorten 
the distance that a pedestrian had to move. So if, if we if we left, right now it's paved to this line. So, so that would mean if you were a pedestrian trying to cross, you're going to start back here. And, right. and you've got, you know, 40 some feet. So we didn't think the truck needed that much space. This is fairly wide. It's a, you could easily make that turn. And so we were going to define this a little bit better so the pedestrian didn't have uh, nearly as far to cross. So that's the real purpose of it, not really the you know, to limit the truck's ability to turn, but to make it easier for the pedestrian okay. to cross. Right. I'm, just, I'm just trying to envision, and I don't, I don't have a miniature truck that I can put down there, but you're gonna have, <laughs> you're gonna have people coming in here, presumably gonna wanna turn in here to get to over there. So some people are gonna be trying to turn. You're gonna have some, I don't know how much truck activity comes in out of it. Maybe, you know, maybe only, you know, one, two trucks a day, except that and most of them come in at night. Yes. In which case is no problem. There won't be much traffic here at night. But if it's, the truck's trying to pull out here, and someone's, uh, I'm just trying to see how that works. Did you do the turning movements? Yes, we did do turning movements, and it easily makes that that move. Okay. So. What what size truck truck did you use? We usually use a, a WB62. 62. Okay. Yes. That, that's a software package that we use yeah. to check whether or not you can make the turns, the can make the turns. 62 is a tractor trailer? Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. A tra that's a good size that's tractor trailer. That's a big trailer. size tractor. That would be something that Walmart would typically run yeah. in out of there. And 55. So, so they, don't, they can make that turn without, without, without encroaching? No, they're, they're going to encroach. Place. They're going to swing out a little bit to the left when they come, and, uh, and they'll encroach slightly on that. On that spot? Uh, yeah, just like just like any time you see a big truck making a turn. I mean, you, you give them a little space, and. And those guys are pretty good at wheeling yeah. that thing around. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is a, this is you know pretty decent geometry, you know, compared to a lot of places in town. So we don't like to get, we don't like to give them too much. Sure, space. no, I understand. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, I see places. I, I see your argument for doing this. I mean, you see an awful lot of places in, in like round and so forth. They have it. Presumably, this is where you should be. But for emergency purposes, they, yeah. they allow you to sort of encroach on that to yes. get over there. Um, but that does have, but that's Jim, I was in, as in the uh, roundabout in Montpelier or Berlin, or Berlin um, there's not pedestrian traffic. So that's, and so I can see why you don't want to encourage that because of that consequence. And also you'd have to have, a, you know, most of the time when they do that, they have like a gravel or something like that that's there. So you have a different kind of a sidewalk. Yes, yeah, they'll, they'll, use a, they'll use a slope curb or right. maybe some pavers or right. something to yeah. differentiate the surface. In this case, we're not. We're not worried about the truck making that swing, so yeah. we're not proposing that. Yeah. Does it help to move this back at all? Paul? This line? You, know? uh, you could move it back a, a little bit. It, it, it might help, but I think in general, there's not a ton of truck traffic. It's it's relatively slow moving, and and they're gonna they're gonna wheel right through that without any hesitation. Yeah. It's been my experience when you allow this this wide shoulder. It isn't the trucks they use it. It's the it's the, it's the <laughs> Everyday vehicle, you <laughs> <it's, it's, it's, laughs> it slide out. Yeah. yeah. So it's. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a healthy, healthy move to tighten that up. I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. <coughs> Did we? I'm trying to. We made a list of the things. That we did. Well, it was the sidewalk yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Basically, we talked about pedestrian crossing signs, and you've identified a number of pedestrian crossing signs on your site plan. Would yes. you identify them for us, please? Yes. Yeah, we have a, a pedestrian crossing sign uh, here, shown in yellow, and, and another one here. And then you put stop signs more than I envisioned, but that, that's probably a good thing. Yep. Stop signs, uh, painted stop bars, and, and actually the painted stop, but, uh, you know, at least uh, initially. Stop bars, and then the... That's, uh, Crosswalks. Yeah. You're going to have a stop sign there too. You just didn't put an arrow or whatever. Right. There's actually an existing that, that's stop existing. sign. That's existing. I, I didn't existing realize that. Yeah. It's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah, it is there. Right. So it's kind of odd that it was there, but it is. So. Yeah. The stop bar yeah, will, will help. Yes. You know, so. The other crosswalking sign there, there's no real crosswalk associated with it, right? No painted crosswalk. No. Yeah. It's just the sign. Okay. That uh, an error on the drawing, or is there to be a? Uh, my experience. Anybody that parks in that parking lot, 
walks at random. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, why I they totally do. understand. Yeah, <laughs> Just that yeah, Walmart has a big cross. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, they have yeah, a huge yeah. one. It's a little bit further down, so nobody's really going to come. Some people there, will so. go down there. Most people won't. They'll just simply cross walk there. Yeah. yeah. So that, that crosswalk sign's probably yeah. not is, Yeah, I was wondering if it's yeah. even necessary if there's yeah. not a crosswalk specific. Yeah. Um, the other issues that we had left unresolved were lighting. Yeah, we made those changes to, to the lighting plan. Uh, uh, Roger had a couple mistakes on his traffic report that he corrected, and we, so we submitted the revised that? one. Okay. Yes. Have you we submitted the um, uh, uh, landscaping plan? I realize it's not materially different, but you have changed. Uh, we have not resubmitted the landscape plan. No. Okay. Would you envision any changes? Uh, uh, no, we would not. So he's still got lower trees in the front. Still, still got that front streetscape. We still um, fairly heavily landscaped around the two patio areas. So landscaping in the front. So Any landscaping over here. Now? Because you've extended that. Uh, uh, there was some there uh, before. Could have been much more than what there was before. It came pretty close to the building. Yeah. Side drawings. Quick to see if anything else we missed. Yeah. But here's the landscaping plan over right here. It did have trees in the front. Yeah. 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 John's got a big one there. So we did. You know, we've uh, eliminated some of the walls, but still, he still has, he still has some landscaping on the side. You know, still had, you know, these, this landscaping all basically would remain in place. So mm -hmm. we've eliminated these two walls. It, you know, so that the, the grading just goes on to the adjacent property. Mm -hmm. and, and then obviously the sidewalk now, you know, is gone. So, and uh, and we have this wall in here, so this, this is now just graded down to, to that wall. So, but the landscaping will remain um, as the show is on the plan. I didn't know if your landscaper would want to reconsider what he's doing here, not to eliminate all those parking spaces. Yeah, he might, he might want to adjust uh, uh, some of that in that space. Not that what's here is deficient, but I think, I think yes. there's room to yep. do yep. a little bit more, but probably crowding. There's back. room to, to move it away from the building right. and get a little bit more towards the edge of the pavement. Right. Yeah. Be healthier for both the, the building and the landscape. <coughs> yeah. And the other thing we asked for, which of course on the new drawings, is give us a sense of the distance between the garden center and Yes. And so now we have dimensions that show yes. the roadway widths. So we did go out with a survey crew and uh, and located that. So it should be should be shown accurately on the plan. So and actually, the, we also added the at the request of uh, the Berlin Mall folks, you know, an existing nine spaces. So there is some striped spaces out there. And you can't see them if you go out there today because there's a, a couple of the big big temporary storage units are, are sitting there. There are some spaces underneath that. So. Would the mall continue to use that area for storage? I don't know, Mr. Chairman. I don't know why it's being used now and what the need for is going forward. I could find out. I imagine it must be for Walmart. Yes, I think for Walmart. Walmart. It is Sometimes it's, they're using it for display. I.e. bags of um, oh, pallets of uh, yeah. pallets of uh, fertilizer. Right. Yeah. 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 It doesn't. It doesn't appear to 
be used on a regular basis. So, uh, so we noticed that today that none of the snow banks in front of the doors have been cleared. So it's obvious nobody's nobody has at least been in them in the last week. But uh, we didn't inquire as uh, to just the frequency of use. And they haven't always been there. I mean, when you look back through some of the historical photos of, of the mall, you know, some years they're there, you know, some years there's only a couple, you know, seems to be a, a, quite a few there now compared to just what we've seen there historically from the photos. But. Yeah. Any other questions by members of the board? I'd be able, I'd like to get these two drawings um, electronically just so I could send them our uh, water wastewater engineer so you can, you can review these and make any comments on them. Sure. Yeah. You mentioned that speed limits <coughs> you're going to put up. Yes. Yes. Uh, both 30 miles per hour. Um, I think you can see it on, you can see it on this sheet. I think it calls it out. Is you want to closer to Fisher Road? Yes. Yeah, one right when you come in. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, for the inbound traffic, and the outbound, this one, you know, just past the stop sign. Okay. okay. And you're right. I've driven in there. People do use, so really there's nothing there, so you go six already, and you do tend to cut that. People do cut that corner there yeah. on the way in. <laughs> At least I do. <laughs> is there going to be a sign on the other entrance to the wall? No, Maybe. not for this facility. No, I don't believe so. Okay. I think... Um, and I don't think the main sign, I don't think the intention is, is to add a sign for this facility. You know, when you come in, you see the, you know, the, the Walmart Planet Fitness Coal sign. I, I don't believe that there will be any additional signage added to that for this facility. There's a part of it that says that, that probably the mall ought to adopt this speed limit for the whole mall complex. And that starts back where you first enter off um, on the mall road from Fisher Road. From Fisher Road. It's a, it's a private road, right. I think. Um, um, I'm, I'm not sure I see that much speeding down there based on my personal observation, but um, I think if people just recognize it's, there's a speed limit there, do you think your, your client would object to us putting up a sign down there? I can't see why they would, but I could certainly ask. But um, yeah. Just putting the signs here only sort of deals with this application, but it doesn't deal with the, with the uh, whole mentality of the, uh, the driver and the whole area. I, I just, again, I don't see speed. I see speeding here because they think they're done. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, when they come in by coals, they don't think I see much there. At least that's my observations. comments that the applicant likes to make here? I don't believe so. I know my client is uh, excited about coming down here and getting started on the so. Chuck, did you have anything you wanted to uh, say tonight? Not really, Mr. Chairman. Just here to you know observe and represent the landowner. I'm not totally familiar with all the details of this project. But. I think it's, you know, consistent with what's been talked about in the past of trying to transform that property into <coughs> more of a mixed use. Yeah. I, I, I don't have any further questions. Any other board member have any further questions? Not on this. Hearing none. Um, I'm to close the hearing. I would entertain a motion. I, we have somebody that came in late. Um, no. Just observing. Okay. I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded to um, close the uh, uh, award portion of this hearing. Uh, any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we have closed the hearing on this matter. But nobody go anywhere. <laughs> and we're going to number two on the agenda. That's it. <laughs> over to item number two on the agenda, which is the same players, yep. uh, which are already been sworn in, so there's no change there. Um, so I, I
application value for a subdivision. Uh, that's for a subdivision of the parcel that this property would be on. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, the engineer. You had something to say first, Chuck? I don't really. I mean, other than that this property is being leased to um, the, the folks who are developing the, the project. This is not a sale, then it's a lease? It's a lease. So, um, um, so why don't you explain to us what, what the subdivision consists of here. And, and, and for the record here, this, this subdivision is unique to us in that it now falls under two sets of regulations that we have. Our existing regulations and our proposed new regulations, which have been warned by the select board. Therefore, the new regulation came into effect. Um, I've never done this before, so I'm going to play it by ear. <laughs> it works for us. So the small Maybe site... Before you pick up here, I, I, I did a, a good perusal of both regulations. I, I think the, the new regulations speak to everything that the old regulations did. There may be some minor changes, but... Uh, well, I was going to put you on the hook here a little bit. Um, <laughs> on top, so. yeah, I wonder which it, it, it is. One more specific than the other, so while both apply, the more strict applies. The more st strict applies. I really don't think it comes into play in in, in this application. I don't, I don't think it does. There's a there's a different there's a different procedure yes. um, for warning these, uh, as I understand it, uh, and you're more familiar with it than I am. Um, the concept plan review is handled by the zoning administrator. It's, it's called a sketch plan. Sketch plan. Um, and the um, uh, uh, preliminary and the final have been warned for the DRB. Uh, this, this would be a major subdivision based on our criteria that involves housing. What was the number of housing units? 99. Yeah, but I know, but what's the, the threshold for major? It's commercial or. Um, or I believe there are five and stuff. That's yeah, in any case, it is a major subdivision, so um, preliminary and final are, are generally required. So, um, what page do you go to then? You know, uh, section 350, I think. Yeah, 350, uh, right here. <laughs> page 363. So, um, why don't you give us an overview of the subdivision, and then we'll sort of go through it. Uh, uh, you have addressed, you have submitted uh, writings uh, to address yes. some of the criteria, not necessarily all of them, but uh, perhaps if you could just tell us how this is being handled. So, when we look at the uh, criteria, we're the Berlin Mall plat, which we've uh, reproduced for you. It, it's been split up into what they label as a number of outlots, and then and then different parcels. It's a little it's a little different than what we would normally do it, but we try to be consistent with uh, with previous plans. And as you can see, there's a, a outlot A and outlot B, C, D, E. Um, you know, there's the this department store outlot, the mall site outlot, the retained parcel, and then some non-building area. You know, we're focused on Outlot B. So Outlot B was, was shown on the original plan as being about 1.95 acres. Um, we've, we've adjusted the outlot uh, dimensions and the location slightly to conform with your subdivision regulations in terms of our side setbacks and our front setbacks. So you can kind of see the darker line is, is the outlot that we're proposing or the lot that we're proposing to subdivide out. The lighter line being, you know, the previous um, outlaw. So we're we're going from 1.95 acres uh, down to 1.94, just a slight reduction, just the way the numbers worked out to make it fit. So this officially will be the first lot that's subdivided out because the, the outlaw. So they're shown on a plan. Um, they've, ne they've never gone through a formal subdivision. There's no uh, state permitting um, for these separate lots. So we have frontage on, on the mall road coming in. Um, uh, I 
I think we addressed the dimensional requirements uh, that we require. Uh, we went through the, the new section and the new zoning regs, and uh, point by point, I believe we've addressed those. Is this in the town center district, right? Yes. There are yes. specific rules. And I can certainly go down through our letter. If, uh, if well, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through real quickly. Sure. And you, and there's a couple of things you didn't address, and I think, okay. you know, um, uh, so I, I just, I'll probably bring them up as we go along here. Um, uh, we're really going based on, on 350, chapter 350, um, which um, has a number of sections, and, and again, as outlined in your letter. Yes. Um, uh, the, um, the first, first one really is the capability of community facilities and utilities that comes up. And I re don't recall, did we get feedback from the uh, police chief and from the fire department? We did not get from the fire department. We got from the, uh, uh, the chief and uh, I talked to him about the uh, speed limits uh, and, uh, there. I showed him this, the new configuration of the stop signs. He didn't have any additional comment. And you did provide this information to the fire department? Yes. And they did not respond? No. So this building isn't any, is, the hospital is as high as this building, right? And it's not a question of having equipment being able to get to the top of the floor of this building. That's not oh, I, I'm not a firefighter. I, I don't believe so. Yeah. I don't know what the hydrogen hospital is. That is that one. Is that the highest? What's the highest building in town? It would be the uh, hospital. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. The cross street should be higher. Yeah, they're right yeah. up there. They're in four stories yeah, anyway, is, aren't they? Is, yeah. So, so it's not the first four story structure right. we have. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would have expected them more to comment on hydrants. Like that. Do, we have, do we have hydrants? Uh, we existing hydrants, so we're not adding any. You know, there's a separate fire line that uh, goes around the building, an eight inch fire yeah. line. And yeah. uh, there's a hydrant right out in front of Walmart, I believe. Yeah. basically in front of a Walmart, right in front of the, the garden center. So that would be the closest item. And the 8-inch line doesn't get any closer, does it? No. The 8-inch line goes along the um, northerly boundary. Correct. Yeah, and we'll be tapping that and bringing a 6-inch fire service into the building. Okay. For the sprinkler system? Yes. We'll be respect the property. Yeah, we, we, you know, we've got all the latest and greatest, you know, the, the current code. We need, you know, to get the full enunciator. You know, uh, you'll have the connection right there, you know, with the boxes that they can plug the pumper truck into to pressurize the system if they need to. So, yeah, this type of facility is pretty, pretty much gets all the bells and whistles, you know, to get the state to approve it. So. And this will be on municipal water and municipal sewer? Um, they have an allocation for water and they've applied for an allocation for sewer. Uh, that's been approved yet, but I don't see any issue with it. Um, the, um, the sort of going down through here, the suitability of the land. I, I, I think what I'm going to do is. Um, uh, move on to the one area that I, I talked about, thought about here, was the design and configuration of parts and boundaries. And, and when it came to water, sewer, and access, um, and I was thinking this was a subdivision, and my sense is it still is. It's a subdivision, even though it's for lease. Um, uh, I didn't see any mention of rights of way. You know, access is off the mall road. It's a private road. Yes. Um, so without an easement, access to this unit is dependent on a private road. Correct. And, and as is uh, a number of the connections for stormwater, 
uh, water and sewer. Yes. They're going off the they're going off the slot for a connection. It strikes me that a subdivision properly done requires easements and rights of ways. Uh, would you disagree? Well, uh, yes. Typically, a, a yeah. subdivided lot would have uh, easements across private lands. In this case, we're a lease lot, so you know the person we're leasing the lot from controls the right of ways, the water lines, the sewer lines. So I would expect that as part of the lease that, that they execute, um, the lease would be granting them, you know, rights to use the Berlin Mall Road and to use the water line and to use uh, the sewer line. It, it would get messy to, you know, to have to provide easements, you know, for all the sewer and all the water lines. I, I mean, are you going to provide them all the way across the Berlin Mall property or? No, just access to. You know, uh, if you're connecting to Municipal water, municipal sewer, and it's it's, it's private actually. It, it's the, the municipality is providing the water, but the water line itself is private. Correct. That's and right. and I think I think the sewer line is private too, isn't it, Tom? I believe it is. Yes. Uh, I, I don't believe there's any. You know, typically we'd see something like this, and and the easements would already be in place. It'd be a sanitary sewer easement. Right following the length of the sewer line, and it'd be a water line easement following the length of the water line, and maybe there would be an on the storm, or maybe not. But in this case, all the utilities are private. There are no, the only easements actually that exist are for uh, Greenmount Power. Greenmount Power does have uh, recorded easements uh, for their lines where it comes into the mall, and they will have an easement uh, coming all the way to, to this proposed lot. So it's, a, I mean, it's a good point, because it's, it's Initially, it came in. I think the representation was we weren't going to subdivide it. Then, there, then, and then there was a discussion about, but we are financing it, or who's building on it and financing it, yes. and the bank needs some security as to what they're going to do and how do we do that if we don't subdivide it. So then the question of subdividing, but it's going to be a lease. So basically, the bank is getting security interest in the lease, and that's basically what their security is. So if, if yes. they foreclose on the lease with only two years left, that's all. That's all they. The interest they have, so it's going to be a depreciating interest as it goes closer and closer to the end of the lease. But that's the way the bank, you know, I guess they'll accept it that way. I don't know if the Berlin regs speak to it, but typically a lease lot is considered to be a same thing as a subdivided lot. We, we don't talk about that. No, most don't, but that's my understanding. If it's going to be a lease lot, then, it, then typically the banks want to see you go through the subdivision process and create it. So. Yeah. But if I, if I were a lender, I'd want to know that I have access to water and sewer and roads to access this lot. And right. if it were not as a part of an easement, it would probably be part of an agreement. Yes, I'm sure it would be part of the lease. So we might want to, in, the, in our decision, make clear that this is, a, I mean, this is just a suggestion, that this is a lease, the proposal is a leased arrangement. So. You know, putting, I suppose, the bank on notice that if they want to be protected with respect to easements and things of that sort, they should look to themselves to do that because they, we have approved easements per se, or you know, or, or insisted that there be a, you know, you're right, some way to get to this property, you know, on a road that's not public road. I will say on that point, um, this is just going on memory. There is a declaration of covenants applies to this property and basically all the tenants on that property have equal rights to all of the you know roadways and, and common facilities so this is sort of they all have easements over that per the declaration of covenants that's something you can share with us i think it's in the land records yeah i could, I could do that. yeah i would feel more comfortable granting a permit for this knowing that something like that is in place. If it's not an easement, it's, yeah. it needs to be a covenant or a, an agreement. Oh, that's a good point. Part of the lease. Um, uh, I, I, would, I would certainly think the owner would want to have that. <laughs> and I'm sure anybody securing a loan would want to have that. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I assume, I don't know that it's our responsibility to make sure that it happens, but uh, I, mean, I think the owner would want to make sure that it happens. I would think that the bank will want to make that, that happen. Yes. 
but I was thought, I thought it was sort of kind of missing that the, we didn't have these connectors. Mm -hmm. But right, when I was looking at this, I was thinking subdivision. I was not thinking uh, lease. Yes. Uh, but it still qualifies as a subdivision. Still, it qualifies as a subdivision, but uh, in terms of the land ownership, it's right. the, the land ownership will be retained by the mall. Is that correct? Technically, yes. Yeah. And this lot will be leased right. Right. by the mall to the... Um, I forget the term, but it's long. When you look, when you look at this parcel right here, is the one you... Yes, and we were just talking about the other, a few minutes ago, the, the, I'll call it the roadway that goes right along the side of the building. Is the roadway, is the roadway here, or is it here? Roadway is not on the, the leased parcel. It is, so it's no, almost. we adjusted the lines, so the existing roadways are just outside the boundaries. That was one of the reasons we, it's a little bit different than what we've shown before. So this is where that, this is the edge of the road, basically. Yes. Right there. Okay. And things like our dumpsters are located just inside that line to make sure that the dumpsters don't end up on, on the mall property or you know, they end up on our leased land. So obviously some of the driveway entrances and stuff cross, but for the most part we're trying to keep all our amenities on our property. On the leased like the electric transformer is right on the line. You know, because being around power actually get an easement and being on the line, that allows them to use that transformer um, to serve uh, another lot, you know, if, if it needs to be, so. In the terms of this lease, this is a 100-year lease? Or I don't or remember. Uh, it's, it's something like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's a long one. I, yeah. I can look that up and uh, let you know. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see something on this. Okay. Um, so we have a sense of what's, what's, in, what's the uh, properties on it. Just, that to us. Uh, could do that for one. Yeah. We just redact out the rental payments and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't even know that. Yeah. Although I'm sure it's available to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just tag it online. Yeah. Um, do you, um, Answered all the questions I have circled on my, my copy of your, your explanation. Does anyone have any questions pertaining? Or would you like me to go through the subdivision standards? I think we I think we should go through. I mean, we don't have to spend a lot of time, but since we haven't used these okay. these standards at all before, well, we actually use two sets of standards. Well, <laughs> I'm, looking at, I'm looking at section 350. Yeah, assumption is okay. a little bit more specific. Yeah, 50, 50. Well, the first one is capability of communities, facilities, and utilities, which we can comment on that. Yeah, I think yeah. we've gone with that. Suitability of the land, suitability of the land has to do with um, uh, you know, is it suitable for the for this use environmentally, yeah. and, and and then the sex criteria is floodplain or drainage. I think that's what I do. Okay. Um, design and configuration of boundary, uh, parcel boundaries, and that's where I sort of got involved right. in this. this, this. Mm -hmm. um, there is a there are some provisions in here, so there's no foreseeable difficulties obtaining zoning permits to build on all lots. And I'm not sure how this lot configuration necessarily precludes the use mm -hmm. of any other out lot. Um, yeah, I guess you'd get to this lot using that same access. There, I assume, or maybe they would do something here. Yeah, but that, that, that lot in the back, too, it's just it's class two wetland. Yeah, so you can't do much of it. Yeah, it's, so, like, so you, it's one of those great pieces of well, land. No, no, not all of it, but to get to the rest of it, it, it is. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. So at least uh, in our lifetime, they don't think we'll see any, uh, any development on that lot. Right. Well, it does it does border directly on to um, Bain Turnpike. That's so right. Access, access, access to that lot would yeah. probably be off Bain Turnpike. And it borders to the school. What it's worth. Yeah. I think the school, if there would ever be a, a, an owner, a deal, you know, <laughs> a deal we won't, we don't know about, yeah. <laughs> might involve that property. Yeah. Um, but I, I, yeah, I think wetlands are an issue from that, but I don't see how uh, the boundaries on this necessarily preclude any other useful of the other lots. Now, I noted that again, this is partly, I don't. I'm doing this in part as an education for the you know the new, new rules. If you look at 2005D, 
which is on page 2-3. It says, property owners may locate more than one principal building on a lot in accordance with the following. And it has some standards. Now, I understand we, we are really creating a new lot, so maybe this doesn't apply, but that's, that was the question. Are we, if we create, I think what, they're, what this is supposed to be addressing that is if you have a parcel and you decide to have one house there and put another house there, and you're not subdividing it, right. you ought to nevertheless locate those buildings in a way so that if at some later date you are subdividing, you're not creating a non-conforming lot by right. subdividing. Correct. So that, that, that's highlighted in my section. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and so the distance between new buildings or between a new building and an existing building must not be less than twice the site setback required in the zoning district unless they're attached. So I, I don't see a problem here, but I, you know, that was one of the issues. I, we actually had something similar to that, less clearly spoken out in our current subdivision regulations. Mm -hmm. We've had that before where we've had people actually build two dwelling units on one lot. And what the board has done is make sure that the lots were separable on a future date. Right. And in fact, they were subdivided at a future date, you know, the ones I was familiar with. So. The, um, Lot dimensions. And you've gone through that. You've reconfigured it so it does meet. Yes. So we meet the uh, ten foot side yard setbacks and the twenty five foot front yard setback. So again, for education purposes, we go to that district, the town, the town center district. Some things I didn't know. Dimensional standards. It says floor area ratio three point zero max. What does that mean? It's defined back here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did you guys run across this before? We have, but the, the definition always varies. <laughs> it's the ratio of gross floor area to the total lot area. So, you, so if you have a 10,000 square foot lot and you have a 40,000 square foot building, you don't need it. You don't need it. Correct. I see. So is it, is it they're probably, and is this working here? I mean, I haven't known this calculation. Is it more than three times the... Uh, it is less than three times. Less than three times. That's yes. good. Okay. And what are those numbers? I, I have their calculator employer. I don't, I don't know. Probably. Well, you have two acres, almost. We have two, almost two acres. So you thousand square feet. Yeah. Roughly, and you've got a hundred thousand square feet above. Roughly hundred thousand. Yeah. So I'm getting closer to the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Four stories each, about ten thousand, so right? So you could add another twelve thousand. Yeah. Four stories. <laughs> Sixteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Setback, setback. Yeah, we apologize. This is this one is new to us, so we're mm -hmm. we kind of make sure that we don't do something stupid here. So front setback, 25 feet minimum to 95 foot maximum, as measured from the edge of the external travel lane, and in no case less than 10 feet from the edge of the right of way. So this is setback more, more than that because of the. Yeah, I think it's 25 feet. What's your front? What, yes. Front is 25 feet, 27, I think. I we're right. 25 feet from our. Lease line. Lease line, yeah. okay. Yeah. From the actual travel portion of the highway, you're more than that. So what that means, Josh, the, the Planning Commission ideally in this zone would like to have buildings closer to the curb, but they recognize that, that there may be wetlands or other restrictions that, don't, that preclude that and this will allow you to go maximum, what is it, 90 feet back from that? Okay. Well, which I vehemently opposed. We, we talked about <laughs> the case at the 90 with your opposition. <laughs> so the sidewalks are five feet wide. You just mentioned that. Uh, providing at least one building entrance faces the road, that's it, is done. Yeah, your typical didn't show up, but it looks to me like you're allowing th between three and five feet of grass area between the sidewalk and yes. the curb. Yes. Yeah. I think we discussed that last yeah. time. Yeah, but try to go at least three. Otherwise, our experience is you can't get can't keep it to say, you know, it just ends up being a mud, mud patch. So. so then you have architectural standards incorporating visible changes in wall plane and 
group form that break up wide facades into multiple bays. A bay must not be more than 40 feet wide. Where are you? Let's see the further. Yeah. Page. Next page, 2.7. Oh, two points out of the way. He's in the district. Yeah. He's in the district, okay. Yeah. Teaching a regular pattern. No, I mean, this is, they have to, this is to meet the district requirements. They have to comply with these, right? Yes. Teaching a regular pattern of windows and entries on the facade. Well, see, this is one I'm a little shaky on here. We're, we're doing a subdivision under the new, but we're doing the site plan under the old. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. There is a provision in here, in, in 3505, that says, the last one says, must comply with all other provisions of the regulations. So it sort of takes, loops you back. Yeah. But the site plan review really is being done yeah. under the old, the old, under the old regulations. But I think they're, you guys going to talk for that, I think their they're schematics that they show, show yes. breaking it yeah. down. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we have a number of different planes. Uh, Obviously, we have different roof treatments. Uh, we have some balconies. We well, we have a, certainly not in a single plane. It's a multi plane building. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I avoided reading the rest of the order. Or does. <laughs> and I stuck to the subdivision portion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go back to. So what we we were on them. Um, well, we were on uh, building envelopes. Building envelopes, yeah. And um, we talked about more than building, one building a lot. Uh, then we talked about design and layout of necessary improvements, which speaks to um, mm -hmm. uh, topography, connectivity, access points, design and construction standards. That has to do with roads. Um, street trees, which I think this complies with. Yes. Um, and we had this discussion last time. I think the only street we're really talking about is just the main, the main, the mall road. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then we um, then street lights, and again, maybe we've done that too. I didn't check you for the LED maximums, which are somewhere else. <laughs> Lighting maximums. They're in. But that's under the site plan. Review. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> As I said, I tried not to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a maximum the old for candles? Or? We believe it's for candles. So we went we back, back and forth between foot candles, candles and lumens. And we think we can for candles. Related, so. Yeah, we didn't ever put out a relation. I think it's lumens. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's foot candles. candles. You mix with them. For candles, it's typically what's made on the ground. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, I think that's really, really hard to lumens, measure. Is, lumens is the brilliance of the lamp. Correct. Foot candles is what you see. So it's really hard for the average person to measure lumens where anybody can buy a $20 light meter yeah. and go out and put it on the ground and say, hey, you got to buy foot candles. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, pedestrian bicycle facilities, and um, I think they've addressed that. Uh, they eliminated that one sidewalk, but I don't have a problem with eliminating that. I, I don't, you know. Frankly, there's not that much traffic down that side street that the no. person can't walk up the road. And that's what they do now. <laughs> they want to see the, what's being displayed on the side of the Walmart. They, that, that's what they do. Water and wastewater facilities. I searched for a long time before I could find the connection on the sewer. I finally found it. <laughs> But again, the drawings are small. small. <laughs> <laughs> but you're served by public water, public sewer, so. Through private lines. Through private lines, yes. Yeah. Which is it takes us back to that. Mm -hmm. what, Easy I think we need to easy. see something that tells us that, that, that this development has reasonable access to mm -hmm. uh, the streets and the stormwater, mm -hmm. water and sewer. <laughs> But I can see how everybody the other tenant would want to have the same thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and certainly Walmart with their battery of attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> Landscaping. Um, yep. I think we've, we've addressed that. They referred um, to the site plan. Right. They, re 
prefer the site plan in there. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. And again, you address erosion and stormwater, i.e., you're going to get permits from the state, right. and that's right. that's it demonstrates your compliance. And you address corner markers in your text. So I, I didn't have anything else. You actually got address stop filing and. Yeah, that's like interesting. Soil. soil preservation versus you know, the erosion. Okay. The one thing I have, and Sean and I wrestled with this, it's on page 2.4. All the way back. Yeah, there's the plan, the thought process, and it's the last two paragraphs for oh. that. Of the, of the example or, or of the of, of the example. Okay. Okay. And it basically says that the the DRB and uh, zoning administrator should track development potential and um, on resulting parcels such as total development potential does not exceed the potential of the parcel prior to the subdivision of the of the, of the zoning approval. And, they were the, the thought process was that, um, and, I, and I, I, Sean and I, ultimately thought on this one is that that this this deals with residential development, um, like a like a residential subdivision, not a not a, a, per se a commercial subdivision like this. That. Um, it's an, uh, the intent is to look at a parcel, the, the parent parcel, of the day that a subdivision comes in, and on that parent parcel, it tracks the, 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 uh, the remaining development of that parent parcel as, as future subdivisions occur. Um, it's something that the Planning Commission wrestled with. We had some examples from other towns. Um, I just don't know how to enforce this right now. But it doesn't apply to this. I don't think it does. Well, if it starts at lot size, if you look at the first sentence, yeah, the example it says pretty clear. Certain districts have both a minimum lot size and a maximum residential density, yeah. so it looks like it's applying to residential. Yes. Yep. And, and there is no residential on on the town the town center. Well, well, then we will have to wrestle I'm with that. Putting that out point. to you is that. Yeah. Well, I also don't know how to deal with these um, explanations within the text of an ordinance. Are these part of the ordinance, or are these enlightenments of how to apply the ordinance? And I, and I, I think that's something that always bothered me yeah. with how, how Brandy did this. Again, yeah. this, this, this was not... This came out of out of out of constituents coming to the board to the planning commission. This this wasn't the consultant's recommendation. This, oh, really? No. This was the constituents coming to the board and lobbying for this. Mm. Um, but still, I, I read that as a, as a as a parenthetical yeah discussion. I don't see it as part of the ordinance. Right. We, we would agree with that. I mean, we see this a lot. And we, we consider them to be an example of how the ordinance should be, or could possibly be applied, not the ordinance itself, so. But it has a statement in here that says, shall keep track, sitting in that little yes. example. That's a little confusing. Second to the last paragraph, it yeah. says, so it, it may not be germane to this application, but right. it will be in the future. I think. Right. Oh boy. <laughs> I think if you look at the, the the purposes of the town center district, this project falls squarely within those purposes in yeah. terms of trying to have multi use and, yes. and housing and yes. infill and yeah. in fact the buildings, all of that all of that. Yeah. that's exactly what that's addressing. Yeah. Are there any other questions? So it's 
preliminary and final. So preliminary and final, we've heard tonight. So you can you need to, uh, to move on the final. You, I think you need to to move on the preliminary piece of it. I think so. That's, we've done that in the past. Yep. Uh, I, I, in reading the orders, I didn't see that. Well, I'm going from past. Yeah, I'm looking okay. at it. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the board. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. We do need to, um, and this is problematic for me, but it's not really the applicant's problem. But we do need to um, uh, apparently make certain findings and address each one of the criteria in our findings. Which is sad because the findings, the criteria don't agree with the criteria we reviewed. I don't know if you picked up on that. Mm -hmm. uh, they sort of mingle, but they're not in the same order. So do we need to go through those as well? I, I don't think so, because I think we've essentially gone through them. Uh, but siting and design, uh, capability and suitability of the site is mentioned elsewhere. But this, these 13 points here are not the same 13 points that are in the ordinance. What page do you want to have on? I'm on page 420. So going back to your issue of do we have to have a separate approval of the final and preliminary, um, I would say we only have a final plan review separate from the preliminary plan review when you basically send the applicant home with instructions to do something. That's how I read this. For 4406D says the development review board must issue a written decision that includes basically findings of facts that address each one of the applicable criteria, which is what I just pointed to, any conditions of approval, and then basically the, um, it does imply that there's an approval process because if the development review board approves it, the applicant will have six months. Well, the applicant's here now for final, not waiting yes. six months. Yes. So I'm not sure that the separate approval is necessary. Um, except for perhaps we do make, need to make it clear that whatever approval we do or do not give tonight is for final work. Um, I, I just being open and honest, uh, the only loose end I have is I want to see a copy of, uh, for the record, I want to see a copy of whatever kind of agreement or condition there is here that basically assures that, and I would think the applicant would frankly want to see that too. But <laughs> Um, ensures that they have access to the private water, private sewer, private uh, road. stormwater system. And road. And road. Yes. And road, yeah. The one that brought to my attention is road, obviously. <laughs> is, there, is there anything in these new rules that say that we can have a preliminary and a final at the same time? It doesn't say that we can. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. had it said that, Tom would have struck it down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, unless somebody has additional questions, um, I would probably entertain a motion to close this hearing. I uh, will make a motion to close the hearing, but uh, if the motion should probably make to mention the, the for the preliminary and the final, right? Yeah. I'll say you. Um, I'm just looking at this section four or five. Oh, yeah. So I'm just trying to make sure we've covered it all. Is there any additional evidence that we need to find any of those? Because we have to satisfy all those criteria, right? On page four twenty. Is that what you were Well, saying? we have to address them. Yeah, address them. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in what they say in, in preliminary plan review, you have to address them mm -hmm. all. Have findings with regard specifically to them, mm -hmm. and um, um, and then if there again in preliminary, if there were loose ends in any of them, you would you would you would basically the findings would identify what additional information the applicant would have to bring forward. Right. Okay, so something I mean like storm um, snow storage. Well, I mean we talked about that the last time. I can't remember. That's something that was not addressed in the other. 
Oh. Uh, storm water, so that was low impact development. Yeah, so storage was mentioned in the other. Um, what is it? Energy conservation. I'm just taking off some things that are there, somewhat unique to this. this well, we did just we did discuss energy conservation yeah. at the first yeah. hearing. Yeah, we're, we're right. subject to the commercial stretch code, so yeah, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't as a part of the subdivision. It was as a part of site plan. Right. Right. Discussed with access to open space and recreation. We did discuss. Yeah, that it's first. different because we have a site plan pending, and yeah. this subdivision is coming in. It's so just they're using a lot of that site plan. It's unfortunate yeah. that the wording, as you point out, is different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you go back to um, the criteria we discussed on three fifty, right. They don't line they up. They don't line up. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's unfortunate because you you go if you were going through this, you'd like to. Yeah. It. Well, yeah. I mean, it, all this is recorded, but then we have to rearrange it into. Yeah. Different. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe one of those things we'll be addressing in the future. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It could be easily lined up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think I think there's no there's no no nothing new here. It's just a different order. Mm -hmm. so that's right. So um, okay. So as we have a motion to close the, we have a motion to I'll close second. the preliminary and the final. I'll second that. And we'll second that. Um, is there any other further discussion? That uh, hearing none, all those in favor of that motion, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Hearing is closed. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Folks have been a pleasure to work with. Obviously, you. obviously, you need to be forthcoming with a number of things as a condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. None the least of which, of course, is your stormwater, your construction permits, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Good luck in the project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are these are? Yeah, yeah. These are. I hope the client gets better. Good to see you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jack, don't be a stranger. I won't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will. <laughs> That's up to others. All right, thanks again. Thank you. Me too. Bless you. So we have. Um, Keep my paperwork straight here. Reduce it somewhere online. We do have on the agenda the minutes of our last meeting. And um, are we in executive Not yet. No, not yet. No. Thank you, guys. Sean. Have a good night. So that's why we're going with the last meeting. Yeah. I did have a number of, of, of um, edits that I had proposed, and I've actually shared them already with um, the recording secretary here. And she's actually gone ahead and made it a redraft. Uh, but because we're not supposed to discuss this out of, out of school, we not right. share the stuff with you. But uh, what I did find, I, I, did, I did ask in the future that she perhaps identify who the players are, which made me think we need to do that regularly when we do the meetings. In other words, Mike Rush, yeah, who's yeah, who's Rushman, you know, yep. uh, and um, and and who's who's the applicant. So um, and she's she's trying to do that. Uh, I'm sort of used to um, our former reporting secretary being a member of the um, uh, PE board at one time. knew who, who was a professional engineer, who was not a professional engineer, who was an engineer in training. So we would get all this PE, -E -I -T stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't expect you to know that necessarily, <laughs> but it, it, but it's useful for us to know whether they're the project engineer or the traffic engineer, and you've and you've done that in your re-edit. Um, I also the 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 last paragraph on the first page talks about um, the the sewer line being relocated, yeah, but it wasn't clear. It comes from the the school and will be relocated. Is all I I think that just needs to be. It's not going to be that. Not that so much about it's going to be reconnect. They're going to reconnect. It's more about the, the whole shoreline line's going to be relocated yeah. through, the, through the lot. Okay. Um, and um, on the second page, um, 
in some places, um, Christy started off with headings for uh, what we were doing, you know, whether it was traffic or vehicle pedestrian circulation. So I asked her to use those headings. When we talk about parking, I asked her to use those headings, and she's added those. Um, there were some minor edits having to do with uh, um, uh, the number of vehicles per day as opposed to vehicles per hour. Uh, when we, they, they told us when I asked the question was how many vehicles per day, they said 311. So it had to be vehicles per day, not vehicles per hour. Um, so there were other edits like that. Did anybody have any other edits? I did not. So um, I've already shared my edits. Uh, um, the, um, uh, it wasn't clear why Mr. Snyder was asking the questions, so I've asked her to include a line that basically that he was very concerned about the effect of the future access to Payne Turnpike. Mm -hmm. That was his, that was his issue, um, and that was kind of it. But um, so I would make a motion since I have all the edits. <laughs> To, uh, amend the minutes, as minutes um, to include those edits uh, uh, and approve them. Second. Motion to make a second. Uh, discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we've approved the minutes as edited. Or At the very bottom, I think I put Mr. Weasel. Yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yes, you did, Mr. Yep. Newizel. So I will change that. Now I knew Mr. Newizel quite well. <laughs> Her grandfather. Ah, uh. right. But I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> Good catch. Yeah. So. Um,